Hi, my name is Mrs. Kathy, and this is k5tunes.com. This is our first tutorial for the saxophone for our district, and we want to be looking at how we put the saxophone together and looking at the reed that goes on the saxophone. Now, saxophone cases come in all different shapes and sometimes sizes. Sometimes they're cloth cases, sometimes they're leather or plastic cases. Um, no matter what your particular case looks like, try to determine what is the top and the bottom. And in this particular case, it has a zipper and then it has this little flap. So I can kind of tell which direction the flap is going to be able to determine that this is the top of the instrument case. You notice that I have the case on a table. It's because if I had it on my lap, it might get a little cumbersome and things might start falling out. And there are quite a few pieces to the saxophone case. So you could either put it together on a table, you could place it on your chair, and turn around uh, standing and take out the pieces that way you could put it on the floor just don't try to leave your saxophone case on your lap now I want to go ahead and open it up and while I open it up I see that there are lots of things inside and the first thing that I want to show you is the reed now the reed is for the saxophone and we have alto saxophone that we play and so when you go to the music store you want to make sure that the music store a salesperson knows that you're playing the alto saxophone. I have a number one and a half reed here. That's a good one to start with. So later you'll be graduating to two, two and a half, and three. The lower the number, the softer the reed is. And so we want to make sure that we have a number one and a half. The first thing I want to do is get the reed nice and wet. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in my mouth, making sure that I don't make it jagged or break it or crack it with my teeth. So when I put it in my mouth, I'm actually just trying to moisten it. And you can go ahead and leave it in your mouth, being very careful to not destroy it while you're putting the instrument together. But because I want to talk to you, I'm going to go ahead and set my reed down very carefully. By the way, don't ever share reeds. Um, your parents should have got you 10 reeds for you to be able to use. And I have the reeds inside my instrument case here. Make sure that you don't just bring one reed to class with you because what if something happens to this reed you want to make sure that you have a replacement for it so make sure that you have more than one reed and be very careful with it if it gets jagged or broken you'll actually have to just throw it away because it won't allow your instrument to play properly so here I have the body the big part of the instrument the saxophone has many, many buttons on it, as you can see, and it has a lot of metal on it, which is one of the reasons why the saxophone pretty much costs more than any other instrument that we offer at the district. We offer flute, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, and sometimes drums. And this one usually is about double the price of the other instruments. So you want to make sure that you're very, very careful with it because dropping it accidentally, um, knocking it up against a desk actually could ruin one of the keys and make it so that the instrument doesn't play very well. So you want to really protect this instrument. Sometimes the saxophone has a little cap on the top of it. If yours doesn't, it's not a problem. But if you have a cap, you want to make sure that you take the cap off very gently. And that's really to protect um, the circular part, making sure that it stays nice and circular so that it doesn't get bent up. And then we have a little screw right next to where you just took out that cap. And go ahead and unscrew the screw maybe one or two turns, but don't take it all the way off. In fact, all the screws that are on the saxophone, don't take them off. Just unscrew them just a little bit. Here we have our, the neck of the saxophone. And on the neck, we have a part that has some cork. This particular saxophone is a little bit older, so this one may or may not need any cork grease, but if you have a brand new saxophone, notice that I'm setting my saxophone body down on the case instead of just setting it up somewhere on a chair. But if you have a brand new saxophone or one that's a little bit tight, you wanna go ahead and take what's called cork grease, which comes like, kind of like chapstick, but you don't wanna put it on your lips. And you wanna place some cork grease on that cork and you don't want to put so much that it's just oozing but you want to put some cork grease on the cork and that will uh, really be beneficial later on for when we put the mouthpiece on 
So we want to take the saxophone body and we want to place the neck onto that hole. And it won't really work well if you haven't unscrewed that screw. Watch how it's pretty tight and I can't really get it on. I could force it on, but I don't want to force it on because that would mess up the circular metal part on the neck. So I want to make sure that I've unscrewed it just slightly. And you notice how I'm twisting and pushing. Instead of just forcing it on by pushing, I'm twisting and pushing. Now, you notice that the bell of the saxophone will be toward the front. And the neck needs to be toward the back toward my mouth because that's where we're going to be putting our mouthpiece. So we don't want to place it like this. We want to turn it and it easily turns. And then we want to tighten <clears throat> that same screw so that it won't be twisting and turning on you. So go ahead and tighten it. Now we're going to be looking at our mouthpiece. If your mouthpiece happens to have a cap on it, that's great. If it doesn't have a cap, that's also fine. And then we're looking for our ligature. The ligature has two screws. The ligature has a smaller end where the circle is smaller and we have the larger end. And we're going to be placing our ligature so that the larger end is on the bottom. And that should fit pretty well. You may want to loosen those screws. Once again, just one or two turns. Don't loosen them so much that you unscrew the whole thing. If you try to put the ligature on upside down, you might find yourself saying, wait, this isn't fitting. I need to loosen those screws some more. Don't do it. If it's not fitting all the way, you know that you have it turned upside down. So you want to turn the ligature over so that the large end is on the bottom. Now, getting back to our reed. Remember that we've had our reed in our mouth, getting it nice and wet, and we want to place the reed just slightly above the mouthpiece. Now you notice that I'm holding on to it with my left hand and the reed is being held tight with my thumb. That way I can use my right hand or you could switch if you're left-handed but you want to use one hand to kind of hold things in place and the other hand to adjust as needed. Now that I have my reed in place with the reed slightly above the mouthpiece, I don't want to have it too far up or too far down, just slightly above. I want to take the ligature, big side down, put it very carefully down. I'm, I just keep checking to make sure that my reed is in the correct place. And then I put my ligature so that it's below this little uh, circular indentation part there. By the way, I've put my reed on so that the flat surface is up against the hole of the mouthpiece. So flat surface goes against the hole. Your right hand, remember, is going to be on the bottom. Your thumb is going to be under the thumb rest. Make sure you're not hanging on to it with both fingers, but under the thumb rest. And your saxophone goes to the right hand side of your body. Your left hand is going to be on the top of the saxophone. And remember that you can adjust your strap either up or down. I need to adjust mine just a little bit up so that my mouthpiece, I don't feel like I'm having to reach my body for my mouthpiece. So I want to adjust my strap so that the mouthpiece is very comfortable right here. That's it for our first tutorial with K5 Tunes for the alto saxophone. We'll see you next time.